After 11 years of war, Syria has been the chessboard for geopolitical and neighboring rivalries. However, there are signs that the war on Syria could be reaching its end game, with increased diplomatic engagement between Arab states and the Assad government, alongside China offering relief from U.S. sanctions. Alternatively, has the clock turned back on Syria, given last week's U.S. mass killing in the country and a resurgence of ISIS? Joining me now from Damascus to discuss the way ahead for the Syrian government is Dr. Bethena Shaban, political advisor to President Bashar al-Assad. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Bethena, for coming back on. You know, every other week or so, UK, US, EU nation armed uh, warplanes are bombing your country. I better ask just quickly, because there's no reporting of it in our mainstream news in NATO nations on television, uh, how effective are the air defense systems against uh, the Israeli attacks, which Israel, of course, says is to fight terrorism? Um, thank you very much for uh, hosting me for RT uh, today. Um, I think uh, we are trying our best to defend ourselves against uh, Israeli aggression and American aggression also uh, in, in our country because, uh, unfortunately, uh, Israel, Turkey, and the U.S. Uh, are striking in different areas uh, of Syria. Uh, for different uh, reasons that they, ha they have, but they are all occupying forces. Our, the, um, our air system um, most of the time hits uh, the uh, attacking uh, missiles and um, prevents them from reaching their goals. But the problem is that, you know, you don't see any condemnation of uh, an aggression by uh, Israel to a sovereign, uh, independent country. And um, this is the question, how does the West accept uh, this without any condemnation, even what happened in the northeast of Syria, even what Turkey is doing by occupying our land in the northwest and also uh, causing demographic, horrible demographic changes and we don't hear any word um, from any Western country who speak about sovereignty, democracy, and human rights to condemn all these actions. Turkey, of course, also saying it's all about terrorism that they're uh, combating. Uh, just, um, I mean, it's reported there are 900 U.S. soldiers. Uh, there were reports of the SAS in your country that were intercepted, I understand, uh, after they neared ISIS territory. Do you have any figures on the numbers of U.S. soldiers? And do you have any numbers on British SAS uh, in Syria? I, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to neglect your question about terrorism, and we can get back to it, because uh, this is what our uh, military forces are doing for the last 11 years. And the pretext of the U.S. that they are here to fight terrorism is absolutely not true because all what they do is really try to support uh, terrorists. And I don't think uh, actually the, the number matters, who, how many uh, U.S. soldiers are on the ground, because they are using also uh, local uh, people and local forces for two reasons. First, to it, uh, cause demographic changes uh, in the country. Uh, in their mind, in preparation for the partition of, of the country. Uh, and, and second, they use their airplanes and to uh, cause the Arab uh, in the region to uh, flee the region. And this is exactly what happened in Hasaka. I'm sorry to say that all the news that came out from American media about the northeast of Syria in the last two weeks has no grain of truth in it at all. The truth is that the U.S. forces are transferring some of ISIS terrorists from uh, the prison and from Hasaka into Tanif, the, the American base on the Iraqi border, and into Shadaidi. And they are destroying hundreds of Arab houses in Hasaka and causing, by the report of UNICEF, the flee of over 50,000 Syrian people, women and children, out of their houses in preparation to giving these areas to the Kurds so that they can create a Kurdish state similar to Kurdistan and Iraq. 
So all the media that they put about a rebellion in the prison and about uh, uh, destroying the houses because they feared that there were some terrorists in these houses, all of this really has no grain of truth at all. I'm telling you exactly what happened and why did it happen. Yes, the reports uh, across NATO Nation media said that uh, ISIS broke out the, uh, their own prisoners out of Hasaka uh, prison. Yeah. But as you know, um, the reports here are all of the success of Joe Biden, who said that um, a uh, ISIS leader blew himself up, killing all the women and children, uh, Abu Ibrahim al Hashmi al Qureshi. You believe he was previously de facto backed by the British and the United States before he was killed last no, week? And not only I believe, really, we know, because the Tenef base, for example, our forces were about to liberate the area completely, and we uh, almost destroyed all the terrorists. So when American airplanes, and probably British, I don't know, uh, started to shell our forces, and kept the terrorists there in, in the camp. Also, the camp, uh, a whole camp in uh, in the northeast of Syria, has over sixty thousand of you know foreign uh, children, women coming from France, Belgium, Britain, from all over Europe actually, and nobody does anything about that. Quite the contrary, they are protected by what they call themselves the Allied forces. You know, they call themselves allied forces that they are fighting ISIS, but they are allied forces in support of ISIS and in support of effort to try and partition Syria. This is their ultimate goal. Those figures are disputed. And after all, then, why would Biden have, uh, have killed this man if he is uh, secretly supporting ISIS, which I should say the Russian intelligence service SVR claims as well in the past 24 hours that they are actually planning U.S. intelligence to target Damascus and Latakia and are employing ISIS uh, uh, insurgents? I, I, I think probably the role of this man is over. They probably used him to the extent that they can't use him anymore. Nobody heard of him before they make a big blow about his importance and about that he was so crucial uh, to ISIS. Uh, nobody heard of him before. And I think they kill him when, they, when he is no longer useful. But if the, I, I will ask this question to all your viewers. If the United States and the Allied forces are in Syria in order to fight terrorism, and the Syrian army, its main objective is to fight and end terrorism of our land, why can't we do it together? If we are fighting the same enemy, why can't we fight terrorism together? That, that's a question I want to pose. Well, the, they would answer that the Syrian government is responsible for terrorism. Uh, uh, what was this? Um, a, uh, a Syrian network for human rights here in the UK claims 130,000 have been killed by your government since March 2021. And, of course, there's that case in Germany of Branch 251 of Syrian intelligence. That's why they can't cooperate with you. You know, all these reports, honestly, uh, are absolutely baseless, uh, absolutely baseless. My government would support terrorism. Syria was known to be one of the safest countries in the world before 2011. What about all this? Why do we have now 60,000 people in al whole camp from all nationalities, from China, from Europe, from all nationalities? Who sent all these terrorists? Who paid for them? Who is feeding them? Who is taking care of them in that camp? 60,000 people a day. Who, who's, who's paying for all this? Certainly, it's not the Syrian government. It's not Syria. Who do you think it is? It's the Allied forces, of course. They are the Americans and the Allied, the Allied countries are the ones who are maintaining and keeping these people in the camp because they refuse to take them back home and because they allowed them to come. How did they allow them to come into Syria to fight with the terrorists? Well, Joe, Joe Biden has uh, revoked licenses for Delta Crescent Energy. I know Trump said that uh, the U.S. avowedly wanted to steal your oil. SVR saying, what, three million barrels extracted a month. How much oil uh, do you claim is being stolen uh, by the, uh, well, effectively with the help oil. of the Biden administration? 
Well, Afshan, all our oil, all our wheat, you see them uh, uh, at noon under the sunlight. Hundreds of American or British trucks, I don't know, they are carrying our oil into Iraq and then or into Turkey and then selling it themselves. They are carrying our wheat, they are carrying our cotton, and they are bombarding our bridges and leaving the Syrian people deprived of their natural resources of their natural wealth. I mean, how could a country that claims to be, you know, the, the bacon of a freedom in the world steal the, the, the wealth and the resources of another country and with, with, with nobody complaining and nobody even mentioning that? Well, the Americans deny it, and uh, uh, Biden, after all, is considering a pipeline uh, uh, for Lebanon through Syria, some degree of rapprochement, arguably under the Biden administration, that finally is starting to respect Syrian sovereignty? Uh, no, they, they don't respect Syrian sovereignty. If they respect Syrian sovereignty, they should withdraw their forces, because their forces in Syria are occupying forces, are forces of occupation. And the first condition to respect sovereignty of any country is not to have forces, occupying forces on its soil. Yeah, and you can't get rid of them. I mean, short of a nuclear strike, how are you supposed to get rid of all these foreign forces on your uh, land? Well, we are going to resist them. We, 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 we definitely will get rid, of all, we get rid of all occupying forces in our country, but we, we, we will do it at the right time, with the right uh, possibilities. That's why they are depriving us also of our oil and of our wheat, so that we don't have the resources to fight them. But we will. Dr. Bhutena Shaban, I'll stop you there. More from President Bashar al-Assad's advisor after this break. Plus, is Scotland Yard done for? We investigate new findings of racism, misogyny and bullying in London's Metropolitan Police 23 years to the month since an inquiry into the racially motivated murder of black British teenager Stephen Lawrence found the force to be institutionally racist. All this and more coming up in part two of Going Underground. Welcome back. I'm still here with Dr. Bethany Shaban, political advisor to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. What about heating oil uh, for uh, this winter? Britain says it's not for Joe Biden's oil sanctions. Your government claims $100 billion lost in oil revenues, let alone the stolen uh, oil. Uh, what do you make of Britain? I mean, famously, it sees that vessel delivering oil. Uh, Biden avowedly doesn't want oil from Iran coming to your country. What's the level of uh, suffering this winter for the Syrian people because of cold? The level of, su of suffering option is huge. And I really uh, personally believe that the sanctions, on, it's not sanctions only, it's unilateral coercive measures taken by the US and by the UK against Syria are really, you know, they, they are really uh, criminal against the Syrian people. They really are a form of collective punishment against the Syrian people. Of course, there is suffering. But again, I mean, in NATO nation media, they cover it that the poverty is all the cause of the Assad government. And in fact, uh, one recent report uh, was saying that your government is a key drug trafficker of Captagon drugs and is the center of the drug trade in the Middle East. Well, I, I, really, uh, I really do not take any of the reports uh, written about my country, whether it is about chemical weapons or about Captagon drugs or about anything, because uh, it has proven through the last 10 years that the media war against my country is part of the terrorist war that has been launched against my country. And from day one, they have been trying to distort the reputation of the Syrian government and of the Syrian people and, uh, and of Syria. Look at what happened in uh, OPCW. I mean, they, they, they wrote false reports. They ignored all the, the proof that came to you them. You maintain from the there ground. was no chemical attack, uh, which, of course, Britain used to as a not. reason of to bomb your country. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the lady who was responsible for freeing Syria of chemical weapons has submitted a report in the UN saying that Syria is now free of chemical weapons. It was in 2015 th that time. And, and now they started to invent 
uh, you know, all these stories. And many people from the OPCW itself has given evidence that they came to Syria and they wrote reports and their reports were ignored and there were false reports that were submitted instead. Well, every piece of NATO nation media, TV, broadcasting, journalists and governments obviously maintain that there were chemical attacks, which is why they had a reason to aerially bombard Damascus. Let's get on to some good news for uh, Syria, arguably. How is it suddenly you're making alliances with the UAE, Jordan, Lebanon, Egypt, Algeria, Saudi Arabia, all across the Arab world suddenly, and you've signed the Belt and Road Initiative uh, documents, uh, memorandum of understanding with the Chinese government? Well, it's not so sudden, Afshin. After all, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the, the UAE, all are all Lebanon are all Arab countries. We speak the same language. We have the same culture. They're Israeli allies. Is they're they're allied to Israel after the Abraham Records. <laughs> I know, I know, but uh, you know, uh, they, the UAE says that they they want to be friendly with all. Uh, parties. They don't want to alienate anyone, but this is their choice. This is their decision. But we are, well, we have nothing to do with that. But uh, they are the ones who stopped Syria for, from functioning in the Arab League. And if now they want Syria uh, to get back, we will, we, they are making probably introductory steps for Syria to get back into, uh, into the Arab world, which is the natural thing to do because Syria is a, a, a very important Arab country and it should be part of uh, the Arab uh, world. As for signing the one road, one belt, we have very good relations with China. It has been discussed uh, between the Chinese authorities and the Syrian authorities for quite a while and we reached uh, uh, an understanding, a memo of understanding and it was signed don't forget, Afshin, that Syria was a major uh, spot in the historical Silk Road. So I don't think there could be a Silk Road without Syria. And uh, we have, uh, the Chinese government has supported us with vaccines, with uh, political stands at the UN and the Security Council, like Russia as well. So these are uh, friendly countries with whom we have good relations, and our relations are on the ascent in, at many fields. Obviously, the British and American governments refute all your allegations. We invite them on. Dr. Bethany Shaban, thank you. Thank you very much. Afshin. Thanks for watching this Going Underground interview. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an interview. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think by commenting below and getting in touch via our social media. See you next time. All that is solid melts into air.